Hi, this is Divya Prakash. In the last video, we saw how to set up a high-dose therapy facility. In this video, let's discuss disposal of disused and spent sources. This is a problem for many of us, so I thought to have a discussion on this topic. Let's understand the definition and difference between disused source and spent sources. Disused sources are defined as sources that are no longer used and there is no intention of using them again in the practice they are authorized for. Spent sources which can no longer be used for their intended purpose as a result of radioactive decay. For example, suppose an institution has a gallium generator, used its life and ordered a new one. By chance, new generator turns faulty, maybe any reason such as mishandling during transportation or any other reason and vendor replaces this with a new one. So now we have three generators out of which two are unused. The first one which was spent will be called as spent source but it is disused also. And second one which was faulty is only disused but not spent. So spent sources are subset of disused. Now as per directive from regulatory body all sealed radioactive sources which have long half life such as cobalt 57, germanium 68, cesium 137, sodium 22 and europium 152 are to be disposed of in time bound manner to its country of origin. Here the two terms long half life and time bound manner needs to be understand. Regarding definition of long half life. AERB at many places says long half-life means greater than 30 years but it specifically tells naming these radioisotopes also to be disposed of as long half-life radioisotopes. IAEA that is the International Atomic Energy Agency in its guidelines about disposal of tissue sources says short half-life means less than 100 days. So we can consider all sealed sources which have half-life more than 100 days should be disposed of as per policy for disposal of tissue sources. Regarding time bound manner, AERB clearly says expiry of their useful life means if cobalt 57 has half-life of 272 days and can be used suppose up to two half-lives. So nearly after two years, the process for disposal of these wastes should be started and completed as soon as possible. Now let's see regulations and policies which are applicable for disposal of sealed sources. There is AERB safety code for management of radioactive waste. This was published in 2007. There is AERB safety guide especially for management of spent radioactive sources. This was again published in 2007. There is a guide from IAEA regarding management of disused radioactive sources. There are two circulars issued by AERB dated 2nd May 2018 and 4th May 2018 in continuation. Let's see one by one. IAEA issues directives on disused sources to regulatory bodies and says regulatory bodies to have legislation regarding clear and unambiguous conditions while issuing NOCs for sources regarding safe and secure management of disused sources. Therefore, AERB imposes these terms and conditions during issuance of authorization. In para 4 of terms of conditions of issuance of authorization, it says disused sources when a source is no longer in use for authorized purpose or upon completion of its useful life, the source should be allowed to decay sufficiently in case of short half-life radioisotopes or it should be returned to original supplier in case of sealed and long half-life radioisotopes in accordance with procedure for the same laid down by AERV. Let's see what all the procedures are laid down by AERV. Following is the extract from AERV safety code on management of radioactive waste which clearly says what to do and how to do. You can go through this. There is ARB safety guide especially for management of spent radioactive sources used in medicine and it says the following. Please go through. Now there are two circulars of ARB. First one of 2nd May 2018 and second is of 4th May 2018 in continuation. Please go through this. Just highlighting some points. It clearly says take immediate action for safe disposal of all disused sources available in your institution failing to which any further permission for procurement of radioactive sources by your institution may not be considered. So be careful. And if you have any disused source in your institution and not yet started the disposal process for this, you must start immediately. 
The highlight of second circular is AERB has advised the suppliers to formulate procedure to facilitate the end users in disposal of disused sources in a manner that there is no undue financial burden to nuclear medicine facilities in implementing the above stated requirement. Means vendors have to re export these sources without charging any money to the facility. Now, let's see why a regulatory body is so strict about disposal of disused sources. In late 80s, concerns on the management of spent or disused sources arose due to occurrence of accidents around the world because of insecurely stored sources. Most of us must have heard about 2010 Delhi Mayapur incident where because of improper disposal of tissue source, 8 people got affected and 1 died. 6 people were charged with serious charges like causing grievous hurt by act endangering life, causing death by negligence of Indian Penal Code. Worldwide, the IAA counted about 100 accidents until 1989 which resulted in 39 fatalities and significant exposure of 266 other persons. The threat of criminal acts and terrorism using radioactive material has also emerged to put even more pressure on the issue. So now we understand rules, regulations and its necessity. The disposal has to be thought even before procurement for such sources and following should be ensured before purchase. The user has an agreement with the supplier for its return once it becomes disused. An undertaking by the supplier to take the disused source within a specified time period and that too in accordance with all transport regulations. Let's see what all the problems may occur while disposal. While procurement, the cost of return was not taken into account and no agreement was made at the time of acquisition. The second may be the supplier with whom an agreement was made is no longer in business or is bankrupt or when identity of source cannot be confirmed. The third, the supplier's country may have prohibited the import of radioactive waste, so its import would be refused. In all such situations, the regulatory body may have to consider other management options such as reuse, recycle or long-term storage and disposal. But these three alternative methods have lot of repercussions and may not be feasible in many conditions. Regulatory body is to be informed and final decision by them is to be abided. Now let's see step by step process for disposal of disused sources. After expiry of useful life, write to supplier and obtain concurrence to re-export the spent source. Once it is done, obtain NOC from AERB for disposal through application for decommissioning disposal. Once you receive NOC from AERB, pack and export the item as per details mentioned in the subsequent slides. Intimate AERB regarding source disposal through application for decommissioning intimation. Once this is also done, maintain all records. Let's see all these steps one by one in detail. The first step is to obtain confidence from supplier to re-export disused source. The vendor will seek details of source and give confirmation about re-export. The details will include reference date of source, initial activity strength, catalog number, serial number, date of disused, activity at the time of seeking disposal. These are all the details we need to furnish to the vendor and based on these details, they will initiate the process for re-export. Once they give confirmation, Apply for NOC for disposal from AERB through application for decommissioning disposal. The route for application is shown in the picture. On pop-up screen, choose source identification number. Click on the three dots for auto population of list of sources. List of all intimated sources will appear in a pop-up window. Select as desired. Example is demonstrated in the picture. Give purpose for decommissioning. You may write expired useful life select yes from drop down in conference obtained from disposal agency attach details of radio isotopes and acceptance of vendor to re-export the disused source once noc from arb is received pack and hand over the source to the vendor each package should be provided with details mentioned below such as origin of waste identification number of purpose maximum dose at contact and at one meter from the surface and so on so forth. Track the shipment and once it reaches desired destination, 
intimate ARB about its disposal through application for decommissioning intimation. Follow the following route to intimate. Fill up the following data available on the screen. The decommissioning approval number, select from list of values, make model that will be auto-populated based on selection, attach concurrence letter of disposal. And finally, keep record of all correspondences for future reference. This is very important. This would be always required in all the regulatory inspections. At last, some disclaimers. This presentation is just a guideline for help. Please check all the information, latest rules and regulations from ARB site. You can visit www.nuclearmedicinesolutions.in for further information and download this presentation in PDF format. Become member, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notification on new videos. Please feel free to write us at support at that of nuclearmedicinesolutions.in for queries and valuable feedback. Also suggest other topics to be addressed of your choice. Thank you.